Hello, I'm Sarah of Communication Liberation and I'd like to tell you a story from my own experience and just invite you to see whether um, you notice some parallels with your own experience of stammering or trying to avoid stammering. So um, for many years I was plagued by these um, quite severe choking, coughing fits that would happen at times when I least wanted them to happen, pretty much only then actually. Uh, and those would be the kinds of times in, in groups of people where silence, it, it, it felt really important to be silent in that moment. So for example, in a play, in that really quiet dramatic moment, or in a group meditation, once everyone had settled down and um, yeah, those sorts of moments, and generally this this little thought would pop into my head, something like, "Hmm, now would be a really bad time to get one of those coughing attacks." And sure enough, uh, a, a chain reaction of physical sensations, thoughts, and feelings would would happen, leading to to one of these attacks, and um, feel very embarrassed about it and start dreading it happening, um, start kind of expecting it to happen, and then um, developing these what, what we'd call safety behaviours of, for example, always carrying water, chewing gum, uh, sitting at the ends of rows near the exit just in case, all of that kind of thing. And um, uh, so the turning point, or one of the turning points was realization that the more I tried to stop it from happening um, the worse it got and also that there was a, a kind of a big part of it was was being over overly concerned about disturbing other people so their reactions uh, and and the real breakthrough for me came when I I actually stopped trying to prevent it um, and gave myself explicit permission for it to happen, to cough, not fight against it and um, you know if people, other people were disturbed well you know that was too bad, um, it wasn't my intention but you know that's what was happening and interestingly it, uh, it, it the severity started reducing until it got to the point where it it wasn't really happening, apart from occasional times when I get these little warning signs, like a little tickle or something, and I just would work with it in the same way of like, you've got, you've got permission, you don't have to be silent, it's okay, this kind of thing. And um, I guess what I, what I see is that there's a similar process that seems to take place in stammering therapy, um, uh, it can be part of the, the process that, that we call desensitisation, um, that desensitisation phase. And so so initially it starts with a, a recognition that the more you try to fight against stammering, um, then the worse it seems to get. And then some this can lead to some kind of some kind of surrender, letting go or allowing it to happen. Uh, giving yourself permission for it to happen in the context of a, a therapy session um, initially and um, yeah and thereby starting to relate to it in this experience in in a different way in a more open way and all of this starts to create conditions for uh, an easier less effortful approach to be explored um, but up until that point, it's like anything that you try to do just becomes part of the uh, the struggle, the fight, uh, not to let it happen. So this uh, this letting go permission um, stage seems to be seems to be important somehow. Um, so yeah, I, I I'm curious whether this this coughing fit analogy um, does seem like it, it has some parallels in terms of your experience of stammering or, or trying to avoid stammering 
and um, yeah in any case I, I hope that it has been helpful to you in some way and um, I'll say bye for now.